I did something really weird with this week's video, and that is I chose a game to play sheerly for fun, not because I thought it fit well on the channel, and not because it was really on brand with the things that I usually cover, but instead, it's a game that I really wanted to pour some time into, sink my teeth into, and play because it's one that I've been anticipating for literal years as I've watched a developer work on this thing. And so today we're taking an early preview look at a game called Manor Lords. It is a city building RTS style game with combat elements and it is simply exquisite. This is a preview build. It is currently the number one most wishlisted game on Steam and you'll be able to get your hands on a copy of this next week when it launches on Steam for everybody. Hope you guys do enjoy today's video. I'm eager to hear your feedback on it and I'm glad I'm able to share it with you today. Thanks for watching. I'm Controlled Pairs. This is Manor Lords. Here we go. What is going on, guys? The game here is called Manor Lords. It is a city building real time strategy game with some combat elements. And today we are starting a new game. I'm going to take this opportunity to just show off the game and begin a Let's Play series to take you guys through world domination in the Middle Ages. First thing that we got to do is select our character. This dude is the only one wearing armor, and I like that. We are going to name ourselves Pears because that is my name. And we've got to make a coat of arms here. They've got a really good system for customizing this to your heart's content and you can you can go crazy with it but to stay on brand i'm going to select just a simple background come down here find a delightful orange reminiscent of the things that we appreciate and uh maybe add you know a little uh, circle action try to get as close to the channel colors as possible i can double this number of that there we go and let's make the primary color black actually maybe give it a white outline there we go it's looking a lot like the channel uh, logo now, and I like that. We can actually adjust the scale too. That's cool. So this will actually show up in game later on. Whenever we're going into battle, we may see that reflected on our flags, shields, and whatnot. And here we are. Humble beginnings, starting off in a new and dangerous world. Let's take a look at this message. So in order to win, we have to dominate the entire map. This means we have to build our town, our manor, and when ready, press our claims. To the other areas we're going to start off i'm going to go ahead and pause time in the games i'm going to leave these tool tips on i've read most of them but it's always helpful to see reminders of it and the first thing i'm going to do is take a look at where we started on the map um i don't have a compass so i'm just going to for the rest of this game treat that direction is north this is south in our region we've got some hunting lands we've got an iron deposit we have a clay deposit and we have berries Still early in the season for berries. We have iron next door as well. The only thing we don't have... Oh, we have stone. Okay, so we're rich in stone, rich in clay. We have plenty of iron. I think we have every resource we need in this area. Next thing I want to do is take a look under the ground. We look over here. We have a ton of timber right in the middle. I will say this is kind of a small region, or at least it feels smaller than I am used to. Um... We've got plenty of underground water options. Oh, we have close to zero fertility when it comes to emmer, which is wheat, which would be a primary food source. Our adjacent areas have plenty. This one doesn't have as much. So the first claim I'm gonna press is probably up here or over here, just based off of that. Um, for flax, we're really hurting. Barley, we're really hurting. Rye, we're doing okay. Man, this is a tough starting spot, to be honest with you guys, particularly without having any emmer fertility. Um, so emmer is the wheat, uh, and that's a food source. Flax is used to produce linen, so we can have clothes. Barley, so we can drink. I have not uh, farmed rye before. I assume that could be used for alcohol. Uh, may also be used in food items. I am not sure. Based off the lack of really fertile soil, I am thinking that we are going to have to set up trade pretty dang early which makes me want to kind of put the heart of the village near this road here because in order to access trade you need to be connected to the king's roads that's all the pre-existing roads in the area uh, but the first thing we need to do anytime is set up timber mining if you want to block yourself out of the game meaning the easiest way to prevent yourself from advancing early in the game is failing to chop down trees because you can't do anything unless you have trees i'm certainly going to move that encampment it's really important to consider the entire plan of your city before you start building because it influences how the entire playthrough is going to go. So one of the things I need to consider early is where the marketplace is. The marketplace in Manor Lords, it really influences um, the efficiency of the travel of all of your visitors and all of your uh, influences the way that your villagers will move around the area. 
And I like the idea of having a market kind of at an intersection at the center of town. Um, originally, I'm thinking like right here, but I guess I'm a little concerned because that's so easily accessible from that road. And if we face any sort of attack from the north, that could be problematic. You know what we're going to do? I'm going to build right here. This is where we're going to build. Yeah, I'm going to put the market right here, which looks crazy. That'll give me 20 stall locations. I need probably about 40 would be appropriate. All right, so we got a marketplace set down. Next thing we need to do is start considering the road network in the area. The way roads work here is you connect them to these points. You can actually hold down the control button and adjust the curvature, which I think is really handy. Makes it very pretty. And you can build roads essentially without penalty, which is fantastic, meaning that it doesn't take any resources to build roads, which is nice because it's such a core requirement of any city builder but typically it does suck up a lot of resources, but I find the resource balance in this game to be re reasonably fair. If you're familiar with games like like uh, Banished, if you've ever played Banished before, it's a lot like that. It feels very similar to that. Um, certainly if you've ever played games like RimWorld, it has a lot of similar characteristics. The, the combat in this, however, is just much more pronounced. Next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna add some spokes coming off of this thing to just offer me some areas to build residential plots. I'll connect this one all the way out to this road. And the next thing we do need to do is build an area to begin collecting timber. So I'm gonna grab a logging camp. We got a hunting area here that I don't wanna mess with a whole lot. Um, I think my logging camp, believe it or not, I'm actually gonna put up here so we can kind of harvest some of the timber off of this spot way up north. Next thing we're gonna want is a couple of residences. I've also learned that one of the things you need to do near your logging camps is put a forester side. So these guys will end up actually planting trees to help replenish the resource as it's depleted. So that'll end up be, being very important. We're gonna set this to high priority to make sure it does get built because if we don't have a logging camp and we continue putting all this stuff down, we're gonna have a bad day because we're not gonna be able to continue building anything and we'll effectively lose the game. Um, we're gonna also need a some houses. Right now I have five families that need homes. I expect most of them are gonna be working up near the logging camp. And so that is what I'll keep in mind as I start to build out some of these initial plots. So this first set of plots, I'm gonna put right over yonder. We don't have enough for all of those. And it looks a little odd to have them real long like this, but if you look at the way that these plots work out, because remember this is gonna be where the people live, on the left side of the screen you can see the actual house location. In the rear you see an add-on or an expansion area. So that's gonna provide room for me to expand it into a vegetable garden or a place to have a chicken coop or you know an armor's workshop. So it's important to make sure that you have those additions available. We'll go ahead and get two plots built for now. Uh, food is also gonna become a priority in the very, very near future. Berries are our quickest access to food. We also have wildlife over here. Our starting food, we have 20 bread, which is actually kind of nice. I think what we'll do is go ahead and putting a, uh, a hunter's camp right over here in the woods so that these guys can start hunting wild game for us while our berries replenish. Now we'll go ahead and stop and let them go ahead and build this stuff up. We're going to go ahead and unpause time. Let these guys go get to work. You can see them start to move about right away. I'm going to relocate this ox post, believe it or not, somewhere near the center of town. Right now I'm going to actually put it on this corner because that is in between town and the uh, game camp. Ox post has been moved. These guys are getting to work on the timber camp. As soon as the timber camp is up, I can assign a couple of laborers to it. These guys are coming over here. They're going to start flattening ground, getting the hunting lodge built. We're at 50% on the logging camp. So early in March, we have plenty of time. This ox is our only ox right now. And an ox in this game is really, really important because it's your main logistical mover. So if you need any, you know, equivalent to a modern day truck, it moves freight. So in the number one piece of freight it's moving typically is timber. The only thing in the game that can move timber is the ox. We have a new message here. So this is the other dude who is on the map with us. Hildebolt von Birnunununu. Where's he located? So he's got two starting areas over on the other side of the map. No big deal right now. It'll become an issue later on, no doubt. Right now up top, you can see we have some de debuffs going on. We have exposed goods because we don't have anything undercover. Um, 
both from a pantry perspective and a general storage perspective. So both food and just general uh, tools and whatnot. And we have homelessness because we don't have dudes in houses. So as soon as we get this camp built, we're also going to have to put up some storage. So we'll have a storehouse and a granary. It'll store food and it'll store general goods so it's not getting ruined in the rain as bad weather starts to move in, which could happen at any time. So there is risk even early in game uh, of something like that happening. All right, we got some timber over here. Now we just got to get to work. Logging camp is done. Now we can af assign families to work in this logging camp. So the key economic unit in this game is families. Right now I have five families. None of them have been assigned to tasks. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to set three of my five families to this logging camp, and they're going to immediately start chopping down timber so that we can begin transporting it. We've already assigned our three families to it. Now that they've been assigned to it, their day-to-day -day lives will consist of coming over here and chopping down wood. We need that wood because that's going to allow us to build our homes. It allows us to build this uh, uh, forester's hut, which is going to replenish that resource. It allows us to finish building out these first two houses over here. So it's important that that logging camp is always working and that we're always working to replenish the timber that they cut down. What I'm going for here in my design is I'm putting the marketplace in the center because that's the economic center of the town. That's where all the goods that are created in the town are distributed to the villagers. And then on the spokes of the town, I intend to have the residential area so that people are generally close to the thing that they need most often, which is the marketplace. Uh, and then we're going to build different quadrants for industry, for farming, uh, for trade off of this spoke. So very much like a wheel and spoke sort of design is what I'm hoping for. And at some point, we'll even have to, you know, put our own castle, our own manor on here. And we'll physically be on the map, which is a pretty exciting transition in the game. All right, hunting camp is finished. So this is our first food source, also very important, obviously. Uh, we'll assign one family to the hunting camp to begin harvesting game. And you can set up a hunting limit over here. So if I look at this resource node, I see there's 20 out of 20 wild animals. I think they're red stag by default. Yes, they are. Um, so there's 20 over here right now, and uh, we're going to allow them to hunt 10 at a time. We won't ever go below that limit of 10. Just make sure we can always have that resource available to us. And there's one family working on that now. Our timber is already up to three. Our ability to transport the timber is actually less than the timber itself at this point. We're actually going to decrease the number of families assigned to the logging camp to bring it down to two. This gives us two families available to work on the rest of the camp because there's still plenty of construction uh, to go on. And we've got bad weather coming in, and now our stocks are exposed, which isn't great. Yep, our supplies are getting soaked in this pouring-ass rain. Not an ideal situation to be in right now because we don't have a lot of supplies to lose. So you can see right now this one ox is just getting worked really, really hard. It requires one villager to move with him anytime he's out doing work. Uh, so one of the families who's assigned to construction will essentially accompany the ox in everywhere, and that's, you know, part of the deal. Right now our trip got reduced because the logging camp has felled a bunch of timber, so the ox isn't having to go quite as far to move the timber from the starting area to these new spots. And the build families will just accompany the ox to the construction site to drop off the timber put all the supplies there and then the other families that are assigned to construction will come by and actually hammer it and build whatever the object is that needs to be built. It's a pretty intuitive way of handling the workforce and uh, it's actually really really fun. It's relaxing, it's not particularly difficult but to maximize efficiency and get it all done well I found it takes a lot of finesse and a lot of trial and error uh, but the game is just extraordinarily well balanced and well designed and I'm having a, just a blast learning how to play it. And the combat system is really, really good when we get into that a little bit later. You guys are going to be just shocked at not only how detailed the city planning and city building portion of it is, but the combat too. Timber situation is already up to 14, which is great. On the food side, we have six meat now as well as our original bread that's all coming from the guys who are over there hunting. These guys are now going to work rebuilding the hitching post that we initially had that ox in. And there it is. Next thing I want to do is actually... As soon as I have some planks here in a little bit, we'll have to upgrade that. I am going to order another ox right now. My stable space is still only one of one. So if I order an ox, we won't have a place to put him. Now we're going to get these homes built. I want to get everyone out of the weather as fast as possible. So we've got two homes built now. We have enough timber that we should be able to build a couple of other homes. So I will do that as well. All right, those two plots look good. Plenty of space in the back to do nice large vegetable gardens early on so we can have another food source. And you can see now we have a food stall set up in here. This happens automatically. Remember we signed those hunters over there to collect meat. Now they'll 
collect that meat, they'll bring it over here and they will actually sell it at market to the rest of the villagers. So as we continue to improve the economy of our town, they will continue to see, you'll continue to see. So as you, as we continue to improve the economy of our town, what you'll see is they'll come over here and they'll open up even more food stalls. That's why I thought it was so important to put the market right in the center of town early on so they're able to access it quickly. All right, some of the other stuff we need early on is logistics. We certainly need a granary. Uh, and I think I'm going to put the granary. Yes, it will fit right here. That is a good place for it. And a storehouse. These are critical components. I'm putting them right next to the marketplace in what will ultimately be my industrial spoke uh, here later on. We don't need a pack station or any of that stuff quite yet. We do need a well very early on. The well, I also want to keep close to the center of town. I'm comfortable with that spot. So well looks good. We don't need a tavern or a church or any of that stuff quite yet. Um... Farming, we do need to think about farming early, but we're just not quite there yet. And we don't have a lot of good options in the way of fertile land. So I think we're gonna have to lean heavily on trade early on, which is fine. That just means we can focus on the industry and the trade side to earn revenue early rather than having to work the fields. And I will say that farming is extremely resource intensive when it comes to the workforce, because you have a, have a lot of families that are actually in the fields, sowing the fields, plowing the fields, crop rotation, that whole deal. And you have to harvest the wheat, take it to the farmhouse, thatch it into grain. Then you have to take the grain over to a windmill and turn it into flour. Then you have to take the flour over to a bakery and actually turn it into food. So that logistics line is, is difficult. It is difficult. It takes a lot of manpower to get it done. It is hard to farm early on. I think I need one more house. That's perfect. You see there, we have the extension available in the back. We also have a house up front and we have room to expand that living space to get a second family in there. So that is uh, a good use of the area right there. All right, so we've got two homes built. We have three more coming up. We have a granary, we have storehouse. We have an initial food source, plenty of meat coming in. Our population is not so high that right now we can actually hunt enough to produce food for everybody. And they are just getting it done over here. Love to see it. Nice. All right, another one done and a family is moving in there already. Outstanding. Ooh, lost some supplies. What did we lose? Does it tell me? And we're running out of fuel. We need a firewood cutter's camp ASAP. Similar to the logging camp. Firewood's cutter, firewood cutter camp is the, or firewood's the primary construction source early in the game. Yeah, and the workers here, they're also gonna fell trees. Um, let me go ahead and pause it while we choose a spot for this firewood camp. I've got plenty of timber for them to work on over here, so I think I'm gonna put it right there. That'll also give them access to a road. So if we put the firewood cutters camp there, road from here to here. We're doing on timber. We have plenty of timber right now, so I'm actually gonna come up here and take one more individual off the logging camp to help with the build crew. So now we have three families assigned to build. Our limiting factor right now on throughput for the builds is really just only having one ox. And so upgrading that ox is going to end up being important in the near future. In order to do that, we need two planks. That means we need a saw cutter's mill. Got to get the housing crisis solved first. So we're going to go housing, then firewood. Forester's huts up. All right. Settlement level increase. That means we can begin... Uh, increasing our approval that will cause the population to grow. It also means we have a resource point. Um, we already said that we are hurting on agriculture and so I think I'm going to go trade early on. Firewood cart would be a good early help. I think I'm going to go trade logistics. That's going to be more important earlier. I can create my own firewood and I know that I'm going to need a lot of trade really fast. Um, not as worried about needing armor quite yet so I'm going to go trade logistics early on and no policies available quite yet. So by choosing that, it's just going to make trade a lot cheaper early. You guys will see that in a very, very near future as we get into some of these later months and I start needing to import food because I cannot create my own. You can see here our approvals no longer locked. That means we're also getting penalized because of the homeless issue. I've had a couple families that didn't have homes. Everyone now has a house, which is a good thing, of course. We still have exposed goods and general storage waiting on this granary and this storehouse to get built up. I think even more important than any of that right now is this woodcutter's lodge. I'm gonna come over here and set this to the highest priority so it gets built fast. Once it's built, we'll get a family assigned to it. They can start chopping down trees, using those trees as firewood. Come on.
There we go. We got a firewood production facility ready to go. We'll assign one family to that. They'll start chopping down trees. And you'll also see a firewood stall appear in the market in the center of town. Good news stories. All right, now we got to get the storage situation under control. All right, a lot just happened. We just got new message, armament delivery. So we've got the ability now to create an army, and you can see here we have 20 spears and 20 shields, so we're going to form a spear militia unit right off the bat. We've got enough to equip a unit of 10 militiamen right now. That's limited by my population. As my population increases, I'll be able to drag more people into the militia. Um, but we only have 20 shields and 20 spears, so our cap in that unit will be limited to 20 regardless of the population until I start producing or importing my own. Here we've also got a storehouse that has been built in, in that storehouse. It just holds general goods. You can see I've got the spear and the shield in there. Residents are coming to grab spears and shields out of it if they are assigned to the militia. So that's what you see here. Is they are taking those spears and shields home to their houses because they need to be ready at a moment's notice when I assemble the militia. We need to start increasing our industrial capacity. So I'm going to start building planks. Planks can be used to create more complex structures. Oh, you can see also now that we have this general storage available, all those people coming in here, they're all bringing supplies from the old camp. So the old camp over here is starting to disappear. Folks are coming to grab the supplies and move them to where we need them. Uh, people suffering from disease may stop working. Access herbs might speed up the recovery. Well, a varied diet. All right, so we need more food options other than the meat that we are living off of right now. Actually, saw pit can go right next to storage because they will end up moving all of their goods into storage. So we'll set a saw pit right there. That looks good. The other thing we need to think early is a trading post. Trading post needs to be somewhere where it can access the King's Road. This is kind of the, the obvious area it would be up here, right? Like at this big intersection of the King's Road. I like that. Let's do that. And we also need a livestock trading post. We'll put it right next to it. And we'll let all that stuff build. Trading posts, we're going to make the highest priority right now because that's going to be our ability to secure food before winter. Once the trading post is up, we'll be able to start importing food. Once the saw pit is up, we can start making planks. The planks will allow us to upgrade our livestock hitching post so we can import more ox. More ox means we can build stuff faster which allows us to scale faster, which is obviously very important, especially in the early stages of any city builder. This is no different, but it's about that like careful balance, not outbuilding the pace of your income. Still 17 meat. Here's the problem. Our wild animals are down to 11. I told them not to go below 10, so they're gonna have to start waiting for the wild animals to reproduce before we can harvest any more, which means our food supply is gonna shrink considerably. All the more reason to get this trading post built ASAP. All right, trading post is coming up. Keep seeing this notification, mercenary companies available. You can pay mercenaries to fight in your army. You can't do that until you, you have personal wealth, though. So if you come up here, you see the treasury. That's how much you as the administrator of this village have in your own piggy bank. You can get that through conquering bandit camps and other regions. You can also get it by taxing your people. Taxation causes a penalty to approval. If your approval is below 50%, you are unable to grow your population. As you can imagine, population growth in this game is very important. Um, so it's a careful balancing act. I'm not yet at a state where I would feel comfortable um, hiring mercenaries by a long shot. And I, and I can't because I just don't have the cash for it. All right, that should be all the timber we need to finish the trading post. Trading post is... Almost complete, 75% complete. We might need one more piece of timber. Should be the last piece of timber we need for the trading post. All right, trading post is up and running. We are gonna assign a family to it right away. And we've come over here to trade. We know we need to import food. I want to import bread. Oh, it's 14? That's crazy. Nonetheless, we, we're going to look for a surplus of 10 bread. How much is it to import eggs? 12. That's a little bit cheaper. I can create eggs locally, though. Veggies are 12. I can make those myself. So I'm really just looking at bread. And I'm going to go for a surplus of 10. This means as traders visit the area, 
I'm willing to buy bread until I have a total of 10 in surplus at a cost of 14, which is fine for now. All right, since food is a challenge that we need to solve, we're gonna plant, or first of all, we're gonna go eggs. Actually, this is a large, yeah, that's fine. We're gonna go eggs there. I'm gonna go vegetable, gosh, I can't even do go vegetable garden. I'm gonna leave eggs here so that we're producing just a bunch of chicken eggs, which is fine. Uh, so this is just gonna be a big chicken farm. That'll be a passive supply of eggs. I'll go vegetables and maybe goats over here. So we have a passive supply of fur. And I can do the same over there, but that costs money to do. And we don't have a ton of money right now. And the way to earn money is through trade, but you can only trade what you have a surplus of. And my boys, I don't have a surplus of anything right now. I'm willing to export firewood until I have a surplus of 20. I'm willing to export furs until I have a surplus of, I'll say five. So that'll allow me to bring in at least a little bit of cash so we can continue growing our own ability to sustain ourselves with some agriculture around here. Now, if you come look at each one of these plots, you can see listed their requirements. They need a church. Uh, they want another option for food other than the meat that's currently available, and they want to see a clothing stall supply. I don't have any of that stuff yet. Once I have all of that stuff, I'll be able to upgrade this plot, and that'll actually give me access to some of these more advanced add-ons. So I can start producing, you know, brewery stuff. I can produce armor. Um, I can equip archers, finally, and all that sort of deal. I'm not in a position quite yet to be able to do that stuff. A church is certainly on the menu in the near term. We're just not quite there yet. I'm going to assign a family over here to the saw pit to begin producing planks. I need to start building more homes so I can increase the amount of folks living here. So the easiest way to do that is just to expand the living space here. That's probably the cheapest way to do it. Um, so they'll basically have a duplex available to them over here. Their chicken coop is up and running. That's helpful. So we're getting a passive supply of eggs. None available right now, but we'll see another food stall go up in here once they start selling it, which will be good. And as soon as our approval rating here creeps up above 50%, we'll see everything start to grow. We just spent 14 cash. I assume that was on food. Yes, we got some bread. We're making a little bit of money by selling our surplus. All right, Ox is dropping off the last of the timber at this duplex expansion. There we go, duplex is up. New family started moving in. That's extremely helpful. So we've got a new family that just moved into this duplex. Increases the labor force significantly. I'm gonna put them in the storehouse for now. By putting them in the storehouse, they will immediately go to work. You can see they're transporting, they're going out and gathering all these excess goods, bringing them back, put them in the storehouse. And they'll actually set up stalls in the marketplace to distribute those goods. So that gets it onto the economy so everyone has access to it. All right, this timber should come down to the sawmill, I hope. Yep. All right, now that our sawmill has some timber here, we should see these guys go to work. Awesome. So we're going to produce planks that allow us to start building slightly more advanced structures or important structures anyway. And since we don't have a lot of farmland, I guess we could consider um, doing a pasture and running a sheep farm and exporting some of that wool. That would very likely be a good use of our time. Now that we have some planks on the market, five total, that should be enough to upgrade this to a small stable. It's got a very high construction priority, so that'll get built very quickly. Oh, he's fucking bandits. All right, small stable going up. Good deal. Now the small stable's up. I need to order an ox. I need 20 cash in order to do that. The other option is to use my livestock trading over here and say that I want to import an ox. Unfortunately, the cost of that is still 20, so it doesn't help me at all. So I need to wait until my trade surplus is sufficient that I am able to purchase one through the trader to get it basically instantly or damn near instantly. I think it takes a month in game, which is only just a few minutes if you're fast forwarding. We need more families. Our approval's above 50%. So we just need more labor in here because right now everyone's got a job. That gives us a family there.
and there we go. Another plot is up and running. It gives us space for one more family, and I can go right in here and expand that living space to make it room enough for two families to move in here, which is labor that I desperately need to keep this place running. Yeah, winter's approaching, but we're not in a good spot. There we go. Room for two more families to move in. That'll increase our labor pool significantly right now. I have no excess. And everyone is assigned to jobs that I need done. All right, let's start thinking about extracting resources. So we have a surplus of stone. I'm going to take advantage of that by going ahead and putting that there now. And we'll be able to export a lot of that stone and use it to build. I need to fire one family. Trading Post is keeping us alive. Woodcutter's Lodge is keeping us alive. Hunting Camp is keeping us alive. Storehouse, not as much. Saw Pit is keeping us alive because they are trading. I'm going to defund the storehouse momentarily, assign them to the Stone Cutter's Camp. Had them start hitting up the stone deposit right here so that we can collect some stone and then export a lot of stone. I'm going to come over here right away to the Trading Post and set up a trade rule that allows us to export stone but maintain an excess of let's call it 10 because we're gonna bring in a lot of ton, a lot of stone fast and it's gonna help get our numbers up quick right now we've only got 10 regional wealth i need to get that up to 20 to order another ox once i have another ox i need to start building out some of these other expansions so that we're producing more food locally you can see they're already going to work on the stone wealth is down to four because we're importing food that's okay that's why we're doing it all right, we got a new family. Thank goodness. I can put that new family back in the storehouse to keep distributing goods. I've got space for one more family to move in. 15 minus 14. Damn it. I almost got our new ox. <laughs> so as you can see, they've got generic storage on hand in the amount of 50. When it fills up, these uh, storehouse workers and the stone cutters will actually have to come over here, pick up the stones, and then haul it away somewhere else. So in this case... They're going to take it over here to the storehouse, I assume. From the storehouse, the traders from the trading post will actually come over and grab it and take it to the trading post where it will be considered for trade. So they're coming over here. They dropped it off. Yeah, so here comes the trader with his own basket. He's filling up. So the stones got moved from there to the storehouse. Storehouse holds them for the trader to come over here and grab it and he will run on over to the trading post and now it'll be available for trade and then there you have it we got stone on the market we also imported a bunch of bread there that's good it's time to almost start thinking about more housing because we only have one available spot right now i do need a church i should have everything i need for a church at this point i think i do all right let's get a church done so church certainly should be somewhere accessible near town so we'll say church there. I'm going to put in some burgish plots here across the street from the church. They're much, much smaller, but this is just population. So two duplexes without room for expansion. Uh, I'm comfortable with that, though, because that's four families for only one timber, essentially. Um, no expansion room. That's okay. It'll be aesthetically pleasing there right next to the church. So the church doesn't do a lot in the way of producing but if i go over here and i look at what these guys need to be upgraded to level two church access is certainly one of them the other that i'm hurting on is clothing stall supply um, i can start importing materials to create clothing here pretty soon but i'm not quite there um, but that'll be next on the list and then as i've got all these needs fulfilled i can actually upgrade these which will give me access to produce even more stuff she just said her bread is freshly baked however we all know that got imported and there's meat hanging over it oh she lies There we go, folks. 
All right, our approval rating is all the way up to 67. We have an extra family that did move in. So someone moved into this duplex down the street. Um, and I've got another room for four more families right there. Increasing your population is a good thing. Got to be careful about doing it quickly, especially in my situation where food is a scarcity. However, it is February. We survived the winter and we did it without agriculture because we were trading early. It's pretty cool. Um, timber situation is down to four, so I am going to assign one of our new families back to the logging camp. That leaves me one family in excess to build. So the other ruler's army was sighted, but they, it looks like they've assembled off map over here. He's got an archer unit <laughs> that's already bigger than my militia, a bunch of spearmen that are fully equipped, and a bunch of men at arms that are fully equipped. So that's a problem if he comes my way. I'm going to keep an eye on him because <laughs> uh, this could be the end of the game if he chooses to just come roll me right now. That would be bad. That'd be very bad. I'm really hoping he's just going to go crush a bandit or something. We're peaceable people. Oh, I need to rename this. All right. Our village is really coming into its own. So we're going to call it, we're going to call it something. Uh, let's call it Traders Branch. It's a trading community on an intersection. So I think that makes sense, right? Traders Branch. Apostrophe. Let's do it. Welcome to Trader's Branch. All right, our uh, wealth is finally over 20. That means we get our beloved second oxen. We'll go ahead and order that guy. He'll be here in the next 30 days. Definitely looking forward to that. That's going to increase our rate of production across the board really, really significantly. Stone deposits down to 781. I'm going to go double check our trade situation here. Stone, we have 271 on hand. I'm going to bump up our surplus to 200. I don't see us ever needing more than 200 stone. We can export the rest of it. All right, need more families, more families. Hey, on command, new family started moving in. Let's go. All right, we want to keep one family in reserve to continue building for us. Uh, we need to start thinking industry. We don't have a lot of iron, so there's no reason to have that guy. Um, we could go clay. I would say barley, but we have no barley fertility. So I'm thinking export here, guys. That's what I'm thinking. You know what we could do? We could start a sheep farm. Yeah, I'm going to do that. All right, so we're going to start a sheep farm. Step one, livestock trading post. And come over here. Let the people know that we want to import. We'll say two sheep. I kind of like the idea of it being out here. This makes sense because it's really the purpose of it is to trade. And so I could put it over here near the trade center. I could put a little pasture right here. A little pasture right there. Yeah, that works. A little sheep farm. Let's go. So they've got like a little holding area here right next to the livestock trading area for sheep and holding. And sheep will also let me start creating clothes, which will meet the other requirement to start upgrading my burgage plots to level two. So step one is sheep farm. Step two, clothing production. Step three, administration. Oh, I did, I got a sheep. Let's go. Oh, guys, it's my first sheep, let's go. The plant's coming together, I got a little sheepy. He goes back. And start exporting wool. Say so I wanna keep a surplus of 15. So now that wool export has started so you get me two gold for right now however um as that wool starts to get turned into yarn and yarn gets turned into clothing the prices will increase significantly yeah yarn fetches yeah four so double what wool does so it might even behoove me to save the wool and turn it into yarn first i think that's the move especially while i don't have much wool so i'm going to come back over here to wool and say no trade on wool for right now. And instead start thinking weaver workshop in our industry sector over here. Won't fit there. It will fit right here. That is perfect. Let's double check our militia situation here. So the militia is capped out. So we've got um, 20 of 36 with recruits missing. So we're getting the population of the village is up to 30. Ooh, generic storage is full at the, the house. So that's significant. I need to upgrade to a large storehouse that'll basically hold me over for the rest of the match. 
I'm going to do that now. It takes a lot of material, but it's worth it because, again, that's like the the hub of all the economic activity that goes on in the marketplace is the storehouse. Hey, new family's moving in. We love to see it. All right, the storehouse is about done, 93%. Complete, nice. So plenty of storage now. I don't see that filling up anytime soon. Could be wrong, we'll see. Uh, new family's moved in here, so each of these guys, the duplex is already filled. So I only have a spot for one more family. That's a good situation to be in. With our excess labor for now, we are absolutely gonna put one in this weaver's workshop. As soon as the weaver's workshop is done, and it is done. So we'll go ahead and put somebody in here. They will start creating yarn from the wool that we have. All right, I am gonna import some linen so that I can get a clothing stall set up. Once I have that clothing stall set up, linen imports are gonna go away. You know what's faster though? I can import flax, yeah. I'm gonna import flax because it's cheaper. I'm gonna say I want a uh, surplus of 10 of these guys at a time. That'll allow my weaver to start building clothes and put clothing on the market. So that needs to happen. All right, we just imported some of our first flax. That should get moved over to the store where it should get collected by the weaver. Who should turn it into clothes? I hope. Weaver has flax. But is she working? Yes, there it is. Linen, let's go. She's got linen. And she's opening up a stall. Let's go. Look at this, the entrepreneurial spirit. She's got the hammer out. She's ready to start her business. As soon as this clothing stall is up, I will be able to start upgrading my burgers plots to level two. And she is in business. Let's freaking go, boys. Oh, there it is, there it is. Okay. Linen is for sale. Okay. Come on. Come on. Come on. Okay, we can do it. All right, so we're going to upgrade this guy to level two. Hell yeah. That's our first level two burgage plot. Boom. All right, this Burgage Plot is up upgraded. That means we can choose one of the more advanced options here as far as the expansion. I want a tailor's workshop that'll enable me to produce clothes as well as cloaks and, I don't know how to say that word, gambesons. Um, unfortunately, it does convert everyone in the, in the building to artisans. This means that they will only be tailors from now on. That is perfectly fine. This is my main export plan. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Um, that means they were unassigned from wherever they were at. <laughs> one month of food left guys we're hurting in the food department i don't know i can't do much else we're hunting but our hunting is capped our berries look okay actually you know what i can do i can give the hunters a break and have them go pick berries for a little bit there we go so we're gonna have a forger hut go up right here that'll let these guys start picking berries which will give us passive income right now it's june so we should have plenty of time to harvest these berries before the winter but we are hurting on food. We'll assign a family there to start picking berries right away. All right, we are out of family space right now, so it's time to start thinking about more houses. You guys can see the constant balance here of managing production against population. Um, it's, yeah, it is a never ending balancing act. So that gives me three, that actually gives me four houses if I do that. So we'll do that. That gives me four. That gives me three. I'll do the same thing. All right, so I put down this clay mine here so we can start importing clay. We'll use that clay to build roof tiles. We'll export the roof tiles. This is all while I wait to continue importing these damn sheep over here so I can keep the wool export alive. And this is also we can have enough money to buy food and that is so that we can stay alive. All right, burgage plots are finishing up. This is the first one here. I'm going to increase the living space right away. Lots of space for new folks coming in. Heck yeah. 
Had a new family move in right away. It's a big dub for the home team. We're going to go ahead and increase living space on all of these because that was the plan going in. Gives us room for eight new families. All right, let that build. Um, this new family that I have will end up working at the clay mines. Poor bastards. It is complete. Family is assigned. Now that they are coming in there. So we've got the first leg of our clay manufacturing line set up. We'll need a clay furnace. They'll fit right there. So the next family that moves in will go to the clay furnace. That'll give us a production of roof tiles. That'll end up allowing us to upgrade our church later. But in the short term, it'll put us in position to export those roof tiles once we have the cash to do so. All right, here comes another trader. Come on, buddy. Buy some stuff. Let's go. I think that's enough to establish my trade routes. It is... All right, we are going to export roof tiles. I'm going to leave 20 in the bank. Put some extra labor into the storehouse to start transporting stuff faster. Because, like, yeah, it's a trade colony. Part of it is running on, you know, my ability to produce these items and get them sold. Um, and so it's the production lines, but it's also the logistics. So I need to be able to move stuff from the point of production to the point of sale. And adding people to the storehouse does that because these people will collect it from where it is in the environment, bring it to the storehouse, uh, deliver it to the trading post, deliver it to the market, whatever the case may be. Only two of them have stalls right now. I'm actually going to reduce it by one. I think I'm going to put one more over here in the trading post because same thing, the trading post will go to the storehouse to retrieve items. So it's like in an agricultural build, you would often see three, four, five, six families assigned to the farmhouse for the sole purpose of harvesting crops. I'm treating, you know, the trading post in the storehouse like my farmhouse. All right, all these guys are ready to start getting upgraded to level two. I think I'm going to start pushing that. Upgrading these to level two also generates income. Let's go. So I got some options here. I can keep pushing down trade. Import prices reduced by 10. That's significant. Here's the other one. Sheep breeding would be huge. But I think in reality, like what's going to have the most tangible benefits for a trading colony at this stage is better deals. And I hate to do that, but we're going to do it. Because it's going to just, uh, it, it'll help me increase my cash flow over here in a really serious way. All right, I got to start thinking food production for winter time as well. These guys already have chickens. These guys don't got nothing. That's wild. So I can start producing my own shields. That would be helpful. We're doing it. Shields. All right, as soon as this joiner shop is done, it's going to convert everybody in here to artisans. That's going to take one family off the workforce. That's okay in the short term because it means I'm going to be able to get shields to the rest of my guys. So we come over here and tell them to focus on producing large shields. They will do exactly that. It'll outfit the rest of my militia. Roof tiles are finally in the storehouse. Hopefully that means they'll get transported to the trade post in the very near future. You know what I think is happening? I think people are favoring the stone over the roof tiles. I'm going to stop the export of stone. Yeah. I'm going to say no trade on stone and no trade on planks. And I'm going to force the roof tiles over here. Yes. Yes. Transport those roof tiles, my guy. Let's go. Yes. All right. Roof tiles are stocked up. Let's do it. That's why. 304 off the rip. That's why. Let's go. We've got some cash. Finally. That does free us up to start expanding these level two plots. We do need a blacksmith. All right, we're going to do it. We're going to go blacksmith. And we're going to go boyer. So now all of our military requirements are met. Food's okay. Unfortunately, we're still on berries pretty significantly. So I need to start thinking about importing food. We're going to increase this to, I want 40 on hand. We're creating our own eggs, so we don't need that. And honey, I'm going to say I want 15 on hand. We make our own meat and berries and eggs. All right, blacksmith, 
we want you to focus on spears for now. And I'm also going to do something crazy. I'm going to unemploy these stone cutters because we have a significant surplus. And we are going to build a mining pit to extract this iron. We're going to keep all that iron ourselves and turn it into spears. But to do that, we have to have A smithy and a bloomery. We'll create tools right here. All right, bloomery's done. Smithy's done. Here comes the work crew. All right, and we need one family assigned here. Definitely need these guys. And this smithy will create some tools for us. I have no excess families. I'm not going to run this smithy right now. I'm going to use all the iron for spears. That gives me one family to build an expansion. What do you think? It gives us two houses with little expansions. That is perfectly fine for right now. We'll do the same on the other side. So it gives me three plots with three expansions. We'll go down. Oh, guys, I got more sheep. I finally got more sheep. All right, I've done all of this with only two ox. I think it's time to start getting another one. This area makes sense. All right, so we had two ox up here. They're really supporting the logging camp and really just all the efforts going on up here. Um, I'm throwing another hitching post down here that I'm gonna upgrade to a stable and I'm gonna purchase two more ox that's gonna serve as a logistical link from down here. And it's also gonna help us as we begin to construct over in this area. Let's go, settlement increased. We've got everything we need out of the trade side in this early access preview build. I'm thinking armor next, or do I want my sheep to start multiplying? I think I need my sheep to start multiplying if I'm being honest. I can import this stuff if I've got the money for it. Let's do it, sheep farm in full effect. The food situation is starting to stabilize. The population is going to increase a little bit here and as the population here starts to increase as these plots get built next step is the administrative building which will ultimately turn into my castle you can see now the slowdown from only having two ox it's hurting me bad at this point because it's a trade you know society so the ox are constantly or the oxen are constantly employed moving things uh to and from the locations where they're produced and so anytime it starts to get you can, you can feel the queuing choke point whenever I put a bunch of build orders in like this. Oh shit, we got raiders coming. We have one year till raiders show up. Let's freaking go. And then we are still not in an excess of spears, but spears are going up, so we are producing them. We've got 28 on the ground now. That's looking good. Do I have a bowyer yet? I do have a war bows. All right. So we're gonna add a militia unit. They're missing recruits, but they've all got bows. So now we've got an infantry unit and we also have a bow unit. We produce those 22 war bows. So we're gonna be ready for those raiders when they show up. Everyone should be coming to get their bows now. Go get him, buddy. Get ourselves another ox there. Have these guys put in a veggie garden as well. Veggies, 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 veggies. Family's already starting to fill these places out. So that's awesome. So I've got four excess families right now. For the first time, I think I'm gonna assign a family to the granary. So that should get me an extra food stall. I think it's safe to say we finally have a trade surplus. We've got 600 cash in the bank. Food is coming in at an acceptable rate. Unfortunately, still tons of berries, obviously, on the market, but bread, eggs, apples, honey, all coming in, and we've got vegetables growing. And then meat coming in, but slower from the hunting camp over here. Nice. We're starting to harvest the vegetables, so that's really launching our food supply overboard. Still mostly berries, though. <laughs> 
but we've got a nice variety on the market. Vegetables, berries, bread, eggs, apples, honey. The people are happy. Approvals at 80%. Public order is still at 90. Still trying to get this church built. As soon as that is done, we can get the administrative building down. That should be just in time for the raiders to arrive and for us to defend our settlement for the very first time. All right, let's do it. Wooden church is getting upgraded. The church is built, boys. Making huge, huge progress here. All right, we're missing tavern supply and clothing stall supply. Should be seeing that clothing stall supply go up as my sheep and wool production increases. The sheep are multiplying. So we've got seven now. Started with five, not too shabby. All right, next up we need to build our administrative building. This, this is the manor. Ultimately, it will become the castle. Because this is the crib. We got the castle planner here now. So we can add a tax office on the other side of the road. Allow us to start raising some revenue from our citizens. That looks good about there. And uh, I'm going to leave it right there for now. And we'll come back in here and we'll mess with it more later. We'll actually end up adding some guard towers, some walls, some stuff like that. Starting off modest, nothing crazy. Alrighty, we've unlocked policies at Trader's Branch. We can now tax our homies. Our public order is back at 100%. Still have high approval. I am going to levy an initial tax as much as I hate to do it. Just because we are extraordinarily wealthy right now and there is not much in the king's coffers. So I'm going to hit him with a 30% tax for one month. I'll take a little bit of a loss, but that'll give me some cash so I can raise a mercenary army if I ever need to. That looks good. And then we'll double check policies up here. Now that we have this administrative building, that means we can use policies. I could have hunting grounds, which basically favors hunting over um, crops. It's actually not a bad deal for me because I don't have crops. Um, and then I could have people going to fast if food consumption is a real issue. What I don't know is if this affects vegetable production. I think it might. Because of that, I'm not going to implement it. And right, next thing we know that we're going to need is a tavern. We can start importing booze. Tavern next to the church, classic, no? Yeah, this, this will work right there. We'll end up having to assign a family to work in the tavern, and then we also need to grow our population because we are full up on houses right now. I can actually level up these guys. Let's go ahead. Timber's coming back slowly but surely. That should be enough for at least a couple. Burgage plots. This guy's getting a great deal. Right next to the bar. That'll work. That's me. Two more families right there. Really nice spot, too. This guy's right by the market in between the church and the bar right next to the, the Lord's house. That's a good spot. One of the cool things you can do here is you can, now that I am actually on the map in my manor, I can visit my town for the very first time. Welcome to Trader's Branch, huh? Wild. I've been at it now for three and a half hours. Got a population approaching 100. Over 100k in the bank. Sprawling trading town. Get ready to defend against our first group of raiders. Pretty wild. This is that Burgage plot we literally just laid down, watching it get built up close and personal. That's pretty awesome. Hey, tavern's done. Let's go. 
soon as we get these families to move in, I need to put somebody in the tavern. Oh, raiders are here. Okay. Oh, this is nothing. Um, so two units of 18 brigands spotted way northwest. Okay, we got time to prepare. First fight. The thing about combat in this game, too, it's very well done, as you guys are about to see. Um, but it's consequential, because if you go to fight and you have a bunch of casualties, that's the economy of your village or your town. You're, you're losing part of your workforce. And so it crushes morale, and you might have a shopkeeper that isn't there anymore, or a dude who is chopping logs or producing, you know, some commodity that you need to trade who's just not there anymore. And, uh, and you can imagine how problematic that is, how much of an impact that could have on the village. Let's assemble the troops, boys. Let's do it. Let's finally, let's finally get a little fight action in here. I can also hire mercenary companies right now, too, because I've got the cash. The taxes just went through. My approval dropped from it. My regional wealth dropped down to just under a thousand, but you can see my treasury went up by 972. So that's the benefit of taxes. Um, while we're at it, I am going to come down here and reduce the tax burden down to 10% just to make sure that we stay well above the 50% mark so our population can continue to grow. I'll do one round of that and then I'll cut taxes the turn after let the population continue to rise. Um, all right, let's get the army assembled here. We know we want everybody. I'm going to have them assemble right in the middle of town. Can I do that? I can't have them assemble in town. Okay, we'll assemble just outside of town. Attacks coming from up north. So we'll have them assemble right here. How sick is this? Just out here hyping the boys before the big game, you know? All right, let's kill some bad guys. All right, I'm putting spears up front, obviously. Archers right behind him in my retinue, which is me with my armored posse in the rear. I'm going to put these guys in a defensive posture. That gives them a defense bonus. Everyone's going to stay in close order because we don't have any missile artillery to worry about. Um, the archer militia here. I'm not going to put them in shoot at will. I'm going to let them fire in volley. The retinue, I don't plan to deploy unless I really, really, really have to. Their armor, they have the best attack. They're certainly my best soldiers. They're also the hardest to replace. So this is the crew that is assembled today. I shouldn't have to do much maneuvering here because I got a nice shield wall up front behind my spears. The archers should thin out at least the first push. Let's go, boys. Okay. 
They're getting some kills. I'm gonna maneuver with the retina. The first unit retreated completely, second unit still in combat. Retinue's committed. Should be turning them pretty easily. Yes, let's go. We call that a dub, boys. Let's see what the damage is. Everybody, we didn't take a single casualty. Alright, so now that this is all done... We won the combat. The village is safe. We can disband our militia. They immediately change back into their regular clothes and they go on home. But now we have all these dead bodies over here. So we need to find a nice place to bury the dead bad guys. And it's just going to be a corpse pit somewhere. I'm not thinking about it like right there. We also now need to assign a family to the church because the church becomes our grave diggers. They will take care of the bodies. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Remember, this is a preview copy of Mater Lords. It'll be open and available for everyone to purchase next week on Steam. This game is absolutely fantastic. A delightful city builder, epic combat that is extremely consequential. I'm pouring a ton of time into this game and really enjoying every second of it. If this is a kind of playthrough that you guys would be eager to see me to continue, I know it's outside the norm of the channel, but just let me know down in the comments below. I'd be happy to continue playing it because I enjoy it a hell of a lot. I love to expand this village into the adjacent regions, build massive armies and take them into combat against the AI Mainer Lord dude who's on the other side of the map. If you guys enjoyed, leave a comment down below, like, subscribe, ask me any questions you've got about the game. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.